Hello everybody, and welcome to another loosely scripted supplemental, and today I just want to rave about how awesome I think the Breen are. I recently completed a rewatch of Deep Space Nine for my upcoming Deep Space Nine retrospective video, and personally, I think the Breen are just brilliant creations with so much great storytelling potential, they could easily be used as the main bad guys for a future Star Trek TV show. So, the first thing about the Breen is their design and overall concept. I love their design. They don't look like anything else in the Star Trek universe, really. They're not the standard plasticine forehead guys. They're not reptilian warrior race things. They're really, really unique in that respect. They have these really bizarre kind of inhuman shaped helmets, which I know a lot of people point out resembles the helmet that um, Princess Leia wore in, in Star Wars Episode Six. Uh, but, you know, aside from that, I think their helmet design is really interesting and they have these really bizarre, strange, distorted voices. There's something a bit odd about that because in Deep Space Nine, when the Breen are talking to the Dominion, they, t they talk in that robotic voice. You don't hear them speak English at any point. But the Founders and the Cardassians and uh, the Vorta, they all seem to understand what the Breen are saying. So I don't know if if that's kind of like the Dominion specifically got like the code for the Universal Translator to figure out to hear what they're saying, or they're just able to read that weird distorted voice somehow. Um, the Breen are also incredibly tall, if you have never noticed that. In a lot of the scenes they're in, they're usually the tallest characters in the scene, and they are apparently pretty damn strong as well. There's a very quick scene in an episode of Deep Space Nine where Worf and Ezri have been captured, and there's a bit where they come into the cell to take Ezri away and do something, and Worf tries to, like, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of them, and he throws out some, like, big, you know, classic double-fisted Star Trek punches, and a Breen just, like, barely moves. He, like, takes the, the strike full to the face, and he, like, barely moves. He just, like, turns back and zaps Worf to the ground. So clearly Breen are pretty damn tough and kind of surprisingly strong. But also in terms of their design, I love their spaceships as well. Again, they don't really fall into the typical Star Trek cliches when it comes to spaceship design. Um, I was gonna talk about this in another video about the Jem Hadar spaceship design. I've never been a huge fan because to me it just kind of falls into the typical, you know, big section in the middle and two nacelles on the side and it kind of adopts that kind of bird motif which a lot of like Klingon ships and Romulan ships already do. So I've never found the Jem Hadar ships that interesting. But the Breen ships are really, really cool. I love asymmetrical spaceship designs in general. They're always really interesting to look at. And the Breen ships have a lot of really cool features like the underslung bridge sections and their weaponry as well. Their weaponry which completely disables enemy ships in like one hit. Um, in Deep Space Nine they do figure out uh, a workaround for this weapon but it does take them a hell of a long time and is incredibly powerful in the battle that it's used in. Like it takes out the Defiant in one hit and the Defiant basically just becomes a helpless sitting duck after this. And the use of the energy draining weapon also highlights a kind of viciousness in the Breen, which you don't often see in other factions. You know, the Klingons and the Jem'Hadar, they're really tough but kind of typical warrior races. And the Borg are relentless, the Romulans are kind of, you know, schemers, they do a lot of conspiracies and stuff. But the Breen are really formidable and dangerous opponents as well. According to DS9, their joining the Dominion was enough to completely turn the tide of the war. If you remember uh, towards uh, the end of Deep Space Nine, or rather the middle of uh, Season 7 of Deep Space Nine, the Dominion were kind of losing ground. They were on the back foot after the Romulans joined the war. You know, the Romulans joined on the side of the Federation and the Klingons, and they were, like, in, a, in bad shape after that and losing ground. But then when the Breen joined the Dominion side, they were basically able to turn the tide completely the other way. So it kind of implies that the Breen as a power are able to fully match wits with the Romulan Empire, which is pretty damn impressive. The Breen also launched that direct attack against Earth. They basically do a raid and like take out Starfleet headquarters, which is amazing. It's kind of insane how they're able to get straight to the heart of the Federation territory, somehow being able to get around their sensor nets and avoid other Federation patrols and so on and so forth, they were able to get all the way to Earth, which is incredible. You know, and even though they lost most of that fleet, they say in the dialogue that most of the Breen ships were destroyed when they were uh, turning away from Earth, the attack itself was still devastating, and 
This willingness to kind of throw away almost an entire fleet just to demoralize the enemy demonstrates a real kind of fanaticism from the Breen and basically shows how willing they are to just kind of throw themselves at the enemy with a sort of callous disregard for the well-being of their own troops, you know? And in every battle in Deep Space Nine that we see them in, the Breen ships have this great sense of momentum behind their attacks. This kind of ferocity, which in and of itself is enough to seriously damage the Starfleet, Klingon, and Romulan fleets. It, it's really striking just how aggressive the Breen are in battle, or at least how they're shown to be. So yeah, it turns out they're actually kind of a major power and really formidable warriors uh, against the Klingons and the Romulans and so on. Obviously they couldn't take all of those factions on at once, but with the backing of, like, the Dominion and the Cardassians, the Breen, turns out, are actually pretty damn powerful. But there's another big factor in what I think makes the Breen so appealing, and it's the great mystery behind them. Now, I've heard there are some good uh, Star Trek novels which feature the Breen, and if you have any recommendations or know about those books, feel free to comment what they are. I'd love to read some of those. Now, a lot of what I'm going to be saying here is a bit sort of game theory style speculation, but I think the inherent mystery behind the Breen conjures some really interesting ideas. So, as I said on Twitter one time, um, it's said in Deep Space Nine, no one has ever seen a Breen without a helmet. No one knows what a Breen actually looks like. But... In several episodes in Deep Space Nine, main characters disguise themselves as Breen soldiers or Breen guards. They do this by, you know, the classic knock out some guards and take their armor. But how is that possible? If no one knows what a Breen looks like, if no one has seen a Breen, how are the main characters able to take the Breen armor and put it on and disguise themselves without seeing what's inside? So. I've always speculated that the Breen are actually so committed to secrecy, their armor must be designed to vaporize the bodies inside if someone else tries to open their armor. That's the only way this makes sense in my mind anyway. There's also the weirdness surrounding their homeworld. So in universe, uh, the characters speculate that the Breen wear their armor to keep themselves cold. Uh, their homeworld must be very cold, and they can't survive outside warm uh, in warm temperatures. So they have to wear their armor to keep themselves cold. But I believe it's in a conversation with uh, between Weyun and Damar. Weyun actually says that he's been to their homeworld, and it's actually perfectly suitable for most humanoid life. It's actually quite nice, and it's not cold or freezing at all. So. What's going on there? And in terms of generating interesting ideas, this is what I'm talking about where I remember I was talking to a friend of mine and we ended up speculating about what's going on there with the Breen. And we came up with this ridiculous fan theory. I have no idea if it's any good, but we kind of came up with this idea that what if the Breen are actually all corpses? Like they're all dead and they're being run by these advanced neural stimulators like um, Keevan was in The Magnificent Ferengi. And that's why they speak in those weird mechanical voices, why their armor refrigerates the wearer, and why their civilization relies so much on slave labor, because, you know, they're actually all dead. You know, that's just an idea. I've no idea if, I've no idea if that's actually a cool or interesting fan theory, but I don't know. We certainly had fun in the discussion anyway. But also, that reliance on slavery and slave labor that the Breen have, which I think lends the Breen to a lot of potential for rich storytelling. You know, others have speculated, I think this might have been one of the books that I saw um, in a reply to one of my tweets, but there's been speculation that the Breen aren't actually one species. There are actually lots of different alien species who are all disguising themselves under the same armor. And they are referred to as a confederacy, after all. Their faction is the Breen Confederacy. So that idea could make a lot of sense. All of this implies, to me at least, that, you know, if they're not dead, <laughs> if they're not corpses run by machines, you know, uh, but it implies to me at least that the Breen operate as a kind of species-based oligarchy. You know, they kind of believe that certain alien races are inherently superior to others, and this belief kind of justifies their use of slave labor, etc. And I think you can kind of see this in their behavior as well. As I said, with how callous they are with the prisoners, and how vicious they are in battle, and how willing they are to seemingly sacrifice troops in order to deal blows to the enemy. If they look down on other species as inferior, it makes sense for them to treat prisoners as harshly as they do, because they see them as, you know, less or beings. And say if their soldiers are made up of kind of second class Breen, then they can be deemed disposable and just be thrown at the enemy like they were in the um, attack on Earth. To me, this makes them the perfect 
foils for the Federation. As we know in Star Trek, the Federation is this multicultural utopian faction with guaranteed equal rights for all, and it champions diversity and unity and so on and so forth. And the Breen, if they are a species-based oligarchy, are the exact opposite to that. And I think a story involving the Breen is fertile ground to explore civil rights themes and class struggles, which are two things which I think are very relevant for today. We could have a story, for example, about perhaps a pre-warp civilization, which is targeted by the Breen to harvest for slaves. We could have a story about um, a second-class Breen struggling for freedom. Stuff like that, you know? And that doesn't mean erasing the mystery around the Breen. I think you could strike a good balance where you could incorporate that sense of mystery, you know, about um, wearing the armor and, you know, distorting the voice and so on and so forth and, and sort of keeping yourself hidden. I think that kind of stuff could be incorporated into the culture somehow and really help flesh them out as a people. Um, but in general, this was just kind of a rant about really cool, interesting things I think about the Breen. Um, but I feel like the Breen in general have been a little overlooked when it comes to Star Trek villains. They sort of fall into the second tier factions like the Tholians and the Gorn do. They're not, you know, the big hitters like uh, the Romulans and the Klingons and so on. But I think the Breen have real potential to become just as iconic as factions like the Klingons and the Romulans, but also have the potential to tell really rich stories like we got from the Cardassians. That's what I think anyway. I think the Breen are just really, really awesome. I don't know if you agree with me or not, or if you haven't thought about them all that much, but... Yeah, I think there's kind of untapped potential. I'd love to see them as, like, the main bad guys in a future Star Trek show. I mean, there's always tons of Star Trek shows in development, apparently, these days. Um, but, yeah, I think the Breen have a lot of untapped potential, and I think they're really, really cool. Jamie Adams asks, hot drink of choice, uh, this channel is powered by Tetley Tea, my friend. Uh, very milky with two sugars is how I take it. RuneWorld25 asks, if given the opportunity to pitch your perfect Star Trek series, would you take that opportunity and what would your Trek series be about? So, uh, yes, in a heartbeat, if given the chance to pitch a track show, I would take it at the drop of a hat. Um, like many trackies who also happen to have an interest in writing or filmmaking, of course I've thought about what I would do. So, I have an idea already written down in my notes for a Star Trek show. In terms of what it is, though, I'm not going to tell you, I'm afraid. Um, this may sound silly to some, and, uh, you know, I get how this will sound, but as I've said before, YouTube is not my career ambition. Uh, I'm a filmmaker. I'm going to write, direct, and produce feature films and or shows. That's my goal. Um, doing YouTube is just kind of a stepping stone to that goal. As unlikely as it is, I know it's very, very unlikely, um, that I'll ever actually get to work on anything to do with Star Trek. And that's regardless of how successful someone becomes as a filmmaker. You know, it's a, it's a very lucrative franchise and its parent company is very careful as to who it lets, you know, manage it and who it lets, you know, write for it and so on and so forth. So even if you're a very, very successful filmmaker, chances are... You, you won't work on Star Trek, no matter how big a fan you are. But if I ever, ever got the call, as remote as it is, if I ever got the call uh, from someone at Viacom CBS and they wanted to hear from me, they wanted to hear an idea, uh, that's what writing down my idea is for. It's to have it ready to go, should that day ever come. Um, it'll probably never, ever happen, as I said, and that idea will just sort of collect dust in a drawer somewhere, but I keep it around just in case. If you want to hear it, you'll have to become an exec at Viacom CBS and ask for it. Thank you for watching. If you like these videos, subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay up to date on my new uploads. If you want to help the channel grow, join my patrons or my YouTube members where you can see videos early as well as some other exclusive content. Speaking of which, I'd like to quickly thank all of my patrons and members who are now appearing on screen. Have a good one, and as always, Live long and prosper.